Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Shorts! Joining me today is a man who, well, he's decided he doesn't need to go to Shanghai. <laughs> welcome, Dallas! <laughs> Hello! Also joining me today is a woman who, well, her Amazonian sisters gave her a hard time for no good reason. Welcome, Celeste! <laughs> Hello! And yeah, this is another one of these hair and hiatus episodes because somebody decided to get married. I'm not saying who. If you don't know by now. <laughs> what have you been? Yeah, you've not listened to the last couple of episodes. <laughs> I say that like I know what order I'm going to put these out in. That's what's hilarious. <laughs> this could be the first one, for all I know. They're like, who got married? The first one now. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just say, it. Jacob is the one who's getting married. Right. And this may be the weekend he got married. It may have been a couple weeks ago. I don't know. Because like I said, I have no idea what order this is going out in. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, that's funny. So, uh, yeah, yeah, how are y'all doing? So good. So why don't we go ahead and jump into our uh, thoughts on at least uh, first off with uh, the Batman of yeah. Shanghai. The following is a spoiler-filled review for the short The Batman of Shanghai. Listener discretion is advised. The Batman of Shanghai was written and directed by Jin Ro. In this one, uh, Batman fights Catwoman and Bane in 1930s Shanghai. Uh, for the cast, we got Stephanie Shea as Catwoman, and I'm not kidding with this credit, Fat Woman. I just hate that name for that character. <laughs> and she, uh, in, in, the, in the movie Your Name, she voiced uh, Mitsuha, uh, which if you don't know what movie I'm talking about, go back to, our, to that episode in our thing. That's first season, first year. Don't remember <laughs> the number. Anyway, Kirk Thornton was the voice of Batman, the Bane, and the mob boss. And he is currently the voice of Shadow the Hedgehog. Except I don't know if he's playing him in the new movie coming oh, out later this that'd year. Be interesting. This is Drew from the future. It's Keanu Reeves playing Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. But we'll see. No, no. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I was getting that confused with Knuckles. Never mind. Uh, playing the martial arts master and policeman number one and number two was Lei Yin. And apparently I did not get any information on who else he played. <laughs> But either way, I actually do have a Kingdom Hearts connection for this. For real? Yeah. Kirk Thornton is uh, in, I think, I don't know if he his character shows up in Chain of Memories, but I know at least by 358 and Kingdom Hearts 2, he is, he plays Syx and Isa, two of the members, of, or one of the members of Organization 13. And uh, the only trivia... One day, oh, I'll let you uh, that. That's when the story starts really getting convoluted. <laughs> oh, goody. Uh, the only trivia I have for this is uh, The Batman of Shanghai is a series of animated shorts from DC Nation Block on Cartoon Network. It presents a, re, a unique reimagining of the Batman universe in a heavy stylized form set in 1930s era Shanghai. And the shorts were animated by Wolf Smoke Studios. So, who wants to give their thoughts first on these? I say um, these I shorts can. because this is actually both this one and the one and the other one we're doing, Wonder Woman, is actually th multiple shorts, but they're all together. They're so they're so short. I, we just decided to go ahead and call, call it all one short. Do all yeah. of them. So I, I want to comment real quick on on the art style that's taking place within this because yes. I, it's very much has that. Um, that Chinese oil ink painting mm -hmm. feel throughout the entirety of it, which when you combine it with the, the, the world that they're in, it's really quite beautiful. And uh, I looked it up, and this is something that the studio, which is um, Wolf Smoke Studios, mm -hmm. this is something they specialize in specifically, is uh, this very traditional-looking art um that um uh, but still done in a modern way and it's it's beautiful like i just think it's absolutely insanely beautiful the entire time i loved how when they mm -hmm. would punch or jump or there would be a a push mm -hmm. off of something that it would spread yeah. the ink a little bit like like it mm -hmm. was spilling 
onto the page. So it reminded me a lot mm, of Akari. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I did enjoy how this really did feel like I was watching a Batman martial arts film. Yeah, uh, definitely. And because I, 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 I just, I just love the, the fluidity and the action of the movie. It's not all doing karate or mm -hmm. martial arts specifically, but it really does feel like you're watching this crazy martial arts film in the for, in like the the feel of uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and other films of that style. Yeah. Absolutely. Actually, there's all my notes is is the the fight scenes were really quite interesting, especially like the opening with a uh, Catwoman when she's got the whip and she's like twirling it around. Yeah, like it was really beautifully illustrated. And then just the action, like it was it's a short. I mean, again, these are literally shorts. I think total was like three and a half minutes, maybe close maybe to four minutes, four, mi four and a half minutes. Uh, depending on right. which YouTube cut you, you get. <laughs> <laughs> but even with that, like it, the story was, it drove the story. The action did a great job of keeping you going. Mm -hmm. It felt, it felt to me like cut scenes from mm -hmm. a video I can see game. That. Yeah. Cause these, they're good. So I was just saying, yeah. Cause these are basically ahead. like bumpers that they played in between, uh, <laughs> block, block commercials and, and the actual show. So, Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and then we watched the Batman specifically. We watched it broken up into multiple videos. So there was always a pause mm -hmm. and then it would pick back up and there was a pause and it would pick back up. So it really did feel like it was yeah. a cut scene in between a video game. And honestly, I would yeah. play that video game. I would too, actually, Definitely. especially if it's got, if it's like uh, got a pretty decent uh, fighting in it, fighting, fight, yeah. fighting mechanics. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I loved that um, in the scene where she was facing off against one mm -hmm. of the cops, I guess. And she did the whip across the way and caught a, a spoon and like whipped it to where it tied <laughs> into the whip. And she was just using it like that was the, the pointy part because that is an actual right. weapon. She she took her whip and created a right. different right. weapon. Uh, I also liked the, the short bit of that fight where it's I think it's in the second of these episodes where uh, it, for a short bit of it, it it's done, but with, uh, with shadow puppets, mm. that was, that yeah, was yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. That was interesting. That was... I thought that was good storytelling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I it was my notes also is that little shadow puppet scene. It was, it was good uh, uh, storytelling and it, it added almost as a cheat of someone that didn't have to do as much dramaticness, but at the same time that mm -hmm. the little shadow, puppet thing told so much of a story which is what those were meant for yeah. was tell these grand stories right. on a small scale also so i thought it was a great cultural reference but also just really well executed well and it also did a great job of keeping it within some form mm -hmm. of reality because you have batman disappearing into yeah. bats <laughs> literal bats just my first thought went to um, okay so he's thing... a vampire in this universe <laughs> apparently i don't know i'd love to find out if they wanted to give me an actual right. series um but the the having that made you go okay this is not just like a mythical world this is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is a real place it's not but it is now okay so batgirl that batgirl catwoman's voice was bothering me this entire time i've been thinking about it yeah because that sounded familiar. And I realized she is the voice actress. A, she does the Haro voice for Gundam. And I don't know. She, uh, otherwise, that would have been the one I use. Because with, with these, I have been, at least been trying to pick things that people in the group know who they are. Right. But she's also the voice of or Orahime from Bleach. Oh, yeah. I do remember saying that. <gasps> Oh. It's, it's been so long since I watched Bleach. I literally went to like the most recent thing I'd seen her in, which was <laughs> your name. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So, but yeah, that, that her voice was just, was killing me the entire time. And that's the thing is like, they had great voice actors mm -hmm. for this. Like she was in that, the, the guy who played Bane, he was in Lupin the third. Yeah. Uh, well, he was it was a streamlined dub oh. of Lupin the third. So it's not the, oh, more, yeah. it's not the, the more recent one. So one where they're right. calling Lupin Wolf. <laughs> Yes. Because they legally weren't sure if they could say Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> that that's still up for debate. I'm I'm afraid your podcast will get shut down for saying Lupin. Um 
But he's also, well, he's it also would have been, it would have been, it would have been knocked out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, so, considering we did Song of the South, it might even have been that. Oof, but that's so yeah. we're still gone, as far as I can tell. There you go. So, but um, but they had some great like voice work. Like for such a short thing, like you would think, like okay, just grab some guys from the back lot mm-hmm. and throw them in here real quick. But they have like legitimate quality voice actors in this short that, and it was really pretty solid that's true i mean, I wouldn't be surprised though if See, these were just people who were already in to record something else and they asked them right oh hey record a couple of lines this here's what's going on and especially when we get to wonder woman at least they are those are characters they've played before so mm-hmm. yep um can we talk about batman for a second sure because talk we- about batman I, I like the design. It's fascinating. I did not mm-hmm. like the way they did his eyes. Like I was, I'm all for the like the 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 movement of the red, like the mm-hmm. red eyes to go around and everything. That mm-hmm. was kind of cool. That was kind of cyberpunkish, which was strangely Strange worked well. 1930s Shanghai, <laughs> right? But it also like worked for the animation. Yeah. But when he stops, it was just like this weird like thing going on. I'm like, what what is happening here? Like it it almost looked like they were trying to imitate. The nightmare um, mask. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Beyond. huh? I'd agree. I can see that. I don't know what the nightmare mask is. Uh, I was talking about like the nightmare ma- it went up in um, Batman, uh, Superman. Whenever uh, Bruce has the nightmare, oh yeah, he has yeah, the weird yeah. goggles over. His eye. Uh, but of course, this is way before that. Yeah. That being said, nightmare mask sounds like a Sailor Moon villain, and I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> So, but yeah, so like I said, I, the costume itself was actually pretty cool. I like the transformation. I like the take on it. I just didn't like the way they did his mask. The transformation was really cool. Yeah. So that was, that was all I had to say about that. No worries. Uh, you want to talk about what worry we didn't like about these shorts? I didn't like his mask. Was, and, okay. Uh, so that, yeah, I guess we did kind of transition into that, didn't we? Uh, I don't I really didn't have anything that I didn't like, like, because it, because it was so short, there mm-hmm. was nothing in there that made me See, go. See, that's Ugh. actually my problem is that it is so short and it does mm-hmm. feel like we were setting up for a story and all of a sudden you get to the end and go, that's it? There's not like yeah. f- two more episodes of this right? that finishes out the story? It really <laughs> feels like we finished at the end, in the middle of the fight. Right. It does, like like there was mm-hmm. something going on beforehand, and this is the end. I of wanted everything. more of this story. Yeah, like part like I know this was like oh, this yeah. was supposed to be just like quick little shorts that played um, in um, Cartoon Network. Yeah. Admittedly, um, we, we did watch it in a way that it wasn't intended because it was supposed to be in between episodes of like Young Justice or something like that. Right. So and, 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 a, I get comer- that. and a commercial for McDonald's. <laughs> right. And I get that, but like it left me really wanting more of this world. Like I would love to see a manga published of this world somewhere. Mm-hmm. I want yeah, a video game. more of it in some form where I would be appreciative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Heck, throw it yeah, in yeah. like a, a Batman version of Spider Verse. I would I would be there for it in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh. The Batty verse, uh, the Bat verse. Warner Brothers, we're give, we're just throwing money at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Just take it. <laughs> James Gunn, you, you, we've already given you the best idea you could have for this new thing. Just go for it. <laughs> right. Just make it happen. We don't need yeah. Velma season two. We need this. Oh, we definitely don't need Velma season two. That no one's gonna watch that. That's what's bad. <laughs> They're yes, doing they're well, doing a second was, season because technically season one actually got a lot of views. And of course, they're they're not smart enough to realize those are all hate views. <laughs> I didn't yeah. get past episode wow. one. <laughs> Indeed. So, but we're not talking about that. No, today. we're not talking uh, about that. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're I think we're all kind of on the same page. Like it it left us wanting more, mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit. And I, I thought I think that speaks to the quality of the the studio. Yeah. But also for for that to be short and you go man i want this like this is what movie trailers are supposed to do for exactly. us now not tell the whole story but make us go i need more of this yeah. world right now mm-hmm. and i loved it mm-hmm. like it was I, just, honestly, it was just I think... so much fun to to watch not in the mm-hmm. same there is technically what was it a batman ninja is that what it is what's called yes that's well, set in japan yep. which is kind of mm-hmm. the same thing 
sense. Well, that but one, it's also not it's, at all. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted this in Batman Ninja when they announced Batman Ninja. Uh-huh. And uh, we're actually going to be doing a review of Batman Ninja for, I don't know when, when this is going to air, but uh, uh, July. we're going to be doing a review. Okay, well, back in April, uh, we did a review of Batman Ninja <laughs> for Anime April, and um, I've seen it before. I did a review for uh, Victims and Villains years ago for it, and uh, the interesting thing about that is the styles kept changing throughout the entirety of huh. the movie. It was a single story, but the style kept changing. Not quite like in the uh, Gotham Knights, uh-huh. where it was like a, it was actually a whole story, but it was broken up in segments. Uh, with different arts, but it was, was, it was just like story. I thought that was just five little short segments. If you pan back, they were all connected. I will have to rewatch it. It's been a while since I've seen it. Mm-hmm. So, but um, I wanted this animation within Batman Ninja. Uh, I will say that. Yeah. Well, I remember when, I, when it first came out, I was like, man, I really wonder if this is going to be there. Unfortunately, it was not. So, yeah, so uh, what would y'all rate this thing? Man, that's a great question. Is a scale ten or yeah, it's, is a scale? It's a regular scale. Scales uh, zero point zero to ten, five, uh, round to the nearest point five. I'm gonna say nine point five. And the only reason it doesn't get a ten is yeah. because I needed more. I'm I'm in the same boat. Like, like it literally ended. I'm still going. I really want more of this right now. So I'm gonna get nine point five. Also, and we might as well make it a triple. Uh, and I'll, I'll go with 9.5 also because yeah this is a great little short and the only problem is it is too short they, yeah. we need like a sequel to this not that it's ever going to happen at this point but <laughs> that that is what we need so now that we finished our review of that one let's hit the uh, intermission and on the other side we'll talk about Wonder Woman Woo-hoo. this podcast is a proud member of Culture Box Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. This week, we suggest checking out Geek Devotions. Geek Devotions is a collaboration of devoted geeks that are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. They produce a weekly geek culture infused devotional, their podcast, Com Talk, and written articles, all designed to encourage and challenge people in the geek community, bridging the gap between their faith and their geekdoms. You can find more of all their content at geekdevotions.com. The Cellcast would also like to thank the following patrons, and I just bumped everything. <laughs> I'm just going to record this and put that music back in later. Ashley Ruiz, I guess I Ashley and Francisco Ruiz, PaulJPowers.com, and the Monster Island Film Vault. If you would like to hear your name shouted out on the show, uncut episodes, and special art from Jacob, you can donate to us on Patreon. So, why don't we talk about Wonder Woman next? The following is a spoiler-filled review for the shorts Wonder Woman from 2013. Listener discretion is advised. These shorts were written and directed by Robert Valley, and he, well, he has a lot of television directing on his thing, but the one that jumped out at me from around this same time was he directed an episode of Tron Uprising. Yes. Uh, In this one, Princess Diana saves Steve Trevor from her Amazonian sisters. One of them being fairly large. <laughs> uh, in this one, we have Greg Griffin playing uh, Joe Beth and Randy, the other Amazonians. And uh, she played Vicky in The Fairly Odd Parents. Susan Eisenberg was the voice of Wonder Woman and Giganta. And uh, she's been playing Wonder Woman at least as far back as Justice League uh, in the Bruce Tim animated Ooh. universe. Hmm. And then Sean Donnellan, who played both Steve Trevor and the guy on the radio. And in the hit video game, Spider-Man 3, the video game, based off of the Tobey Maguire film, he played Morbius. I really didn't have much to pull from for him. I apologize. (laughs) But was he a better Morbius than... You know, I never actually got far enough in that game. (laughs) To even, to even know, find out that Morbius was a character? Because I didn't learn about Morbius until I saw the trailers for the film. <laughs> what? Like you, didn't know, so like, sorry. Or you didn't know anything about Morbius, I didn't period, know Morbius or? was a person. I oh, had never wow. heard the name. 
Oh, man. Just because I didn't read Spider-Man comics growing up. Fair. I didn't actually read a lot of Marvel growing up either, and I don't remember <laughs> if he ever showed up in the cartoon. But if he did, I would have forgotten about it probably because... He was in the cartoon. He also was there with along with uh, Tombstone. I See, I remember Tombstone, but Tombstone's come up a lot more recently in some of the other Spider-Man materials, so... That's fair. Either way. Uh, I... The, the only trivia I got for this is that this is the only appearance ever of Giganta. <laughs> really? I looked to find out, who, am I supposed to know who this is? I like to think if there's a giant kaiju Amazonian that I would have known about it by now. <laughs> I mean, she was in the comics. I couldn't find her in the, in the, when I was doing my research on anything but this. But maybe I was looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> Where in the comics? Oh, you're going to make me go looking for it. I would love. To- I am, because I have no memory of of this person. I haven't read all of the Wonder Woman comics, but I wish I had right. the Jeopardy uh, music publication. on here. Giganta is a fictional character appearing in DC Comics publication related media, commonly recurring adversary of the superhero Wonder Woman, an occasional fo- foil to the superhero the Atom. Uh, she debuted in the Brutish as a Brutish strong woman in 1944's Wonder Woman number nine, written by Wonder Woman creator William Moulton uh, Marston. Uh, Post Crisis Incarnation Dragon possesses a superhuman ability to increase her physical size and mass, effectively transforming into a giantess. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, then allow me to modify well, that trivia and say this is the only thing outside of the comic she's ever appeared in. Because <laughs> I'm fairly <laughs> certain that's right. <laughs> I'm not doing curse anything you, else. Say- curse you, DC oh. Wiki, for no, lying to me. She was on TV. A variation of Gigantus Girl. Uh, Giant's gorilla form called Gargutuan appeared in Wonder Woman episode uh, Wonder Woman versus Gargutuan. Gar- 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 Gargantuan? Gargantua? Gargantua. Maybe? Um, yeah, so she was in that. I like Gargutuan. That. She was in that's Challenge the, of the Super Friends. That's the new. Okay, uh, okay so in... the DC wiki I read from, which I don't even know which one it was, <laughs> lied to me because this is these two things have been the hardest thing for me to find trivia for. <laughs> She's been in several movies. She was in Lego DC uh, Comics um, superheroes. Yeah, she was in video games. Okay, I've just never <laughs> heard of her before. My apologies, Giganta. <laughs> yeah, you don't want her to step on you. Go go go! Hang out with Giant oh, Man over man. in Marvel, and uh, you'll have a better time. Trust me. There you go. <laughs> so. What are our thoughts on this one? Yeah, there was no Kingdom Hearts references on this, so. Or at least I didn't find it fast enough, so. I'm not going to go that deep into the Wikipedia to figure that out. I I didn't go through collaboration (laughs) search on this one, so. I only barely ran across the other guy in in the in the Batman one by accident, so. I go, oh, it's that guy. Well, that night recognized his picture on IMDb from a million times before, but either way. What are our likes on this one? Um, I liked the general vibe mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. If that's if I if I, if I can mm-hmm. say it like that, like it's it had this like seventies hippie type feel to it, but not quite. It, the art style is very pop art. Yeah, it reminds me of Salvador Dali paintings. Uh, a little bit, yeah. And mm. yeah, I could see that. See, and the art, the art is something that I am, I am mixed on. So I was going to save not that for later. Myself, I'm not a big fan of it because I am not a surrealist fan, and there's mm-hmm. a bit of surrealism in this. But for what I mm. understand of sur- of surrealism, I think it's done fairly well. But I'm not a fan of it myself, so. Yeah, it's it's an interesting art form. I I, I appreciate it um, because of what it is. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the flatness of it and um, the way that it, I appreciate yeah. the other aspect. Like, it's very simple. Uh, I like the fact that Wonder Woman is the only character who's fully in color throughout the entirety of the book of the story. I thought was an interesting choice that was made. Yeah, and. I liked a, that. I liked that she and the car were the only until ones. Until the car in color. was invisible. 
which, and that was which interesting. Which then I have to say, that oh, is not man. a very... You know, I understood that the invisible plane, at the very least, also turned the occupant invisible. <laughs> not that it did in the, not oh, no, did in the Super Friends, well. but in this one, she's purely visible the entire time. Right. So, but she looked cool leaning back. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Skating back on it. No, no. Well, and the thing is, is that she was technically invisible. They just had her shown so that we knew uh, what was going on. What was happening? Was... Like nobody else could see her. I, I, I would have preferred them put like a transparency over her to make that more obvious. <laughs> Not much of one. Just like okay, yeah, she's obviously invisible or just turned into a ghost for no reason. <laughs> But that's just yeah. my weirdness. Gotcha. <laughs> so, you know what it reminds me of? And I don't know, Drew, if you grew up on MTV or not, but it reminds I did me not. of this. I would not have been allowed to watch that channel if we could have <laughs> afforded it. <laughs> so, as a kid, I watched it with my dad, and they had these shorts um, that would play during MTV. And um, it also reminds me of some of the, the old Cartoon Network robot chicken. I, so I not was, robot chicken, I was, but like the... I was thinking I like was, the old Cartoon Network music video uh, shorts yeah. that you, well, they used to play. Things, the guy was, who did this did the art for the gorillas. That makes sense, actually. Oh, that makes sense. I was waiting for Space Ghost to come <laughs> yes. on because it felt like Robot Chicken. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, it's over. Now we get Space Ghost. I, I didn't think on... we were looking at Wonder Woman on Adult Swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next, next we're going to be watching uncut episodes of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> right? With the blood. <laughs> With the, the blood. And Roshi will actually get to say his perverted jokes and not be edited. <laughs> Lord. Oh my gosh! Speaking of jokes, I thought there was some there was some funny one liners like when uh, Home Dude goes. There were some. Funny not sure what they feed them, but they keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Well, this I think this <laughs> would have had funny. to have come out before the Wonder Woman movie, I think. Mm -hmm. But still, the fact that he kept mm -hmm. going calling Stephen Tre Steve Trevor's log, I'm thinking, this is you're saying this because Chris Pine, who played Steve Trevor, is also playing Kirk, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Except oh this has to be before that. So unless I, mean, I don't remember my timelines because I don't remember when the original Wonder Woman movie came out. But I want to say it came out in like 2000, and which is far. They, they would not have announced Chris Pine playing that role no. that early. So this is just yeah, a coincidence. But you yeah. know, looking back on it, it's like that feels like that was intentional. Yeah. I want to say that Celeste and I did a review on this years ago, um, back when uh, we used to do these things called lunch break reviews. Mm -hmm. Back when it, when DC had their own app that you could watch all the stuff on. Right. Yeah. That's where we watched yeah. all of these originally. And um, that was well before they announced anything Wonder Woman yeah. related. Really, I I think. It was when you could still watch things and yeah. read comics. I do remember that app. that app. I never had it, but I remember hearing about it. I, I didn't have the app because I already had Comixology, and so if I wanted to read DC, I could still get it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. That was probably the best way to do it, too. <laughs> and I could get Marvel. Yeah. And, then so. he, and a bunch of other things. <laughs> uh, the surf scene I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I just like the art of that. It reminded me very yeah. much of the... Uh, going back to that that uh, Asian Japanese art style of the flat waves mm -hmm. and everything like that, um, but uh, again the entire thing was very dynamic. Like I I I want somebody to score this. I I, I need a band to pick this up and do like an epic song to this. Um, I think it would be great if that was the case. Even better if it's surf rock. Mm. <laughs> See, I could see it being something mm -hmm. like the Gorillas, that mm -hmm. real chill rock ish. Definitely, definitely. I so. could see that. So, okay, I I'm I'm just gonna hop onto the. Oh, the dislikes, let me just get so. one other like in there, and it's like I just I like y'all said oh, yeah, I really yeah, yeah, do ahead. love the general vibe and this because this feels despite the, all the action and the fighting in this this has a very chill feel to it and that mm -hmm. i really do love that about mm -hmm. this because it really felt like 
this is you're about to watch some of the coolest things that you've ever seen wonder woman ever do and yet you're not going to be able to describe it to anyone because it's going to sound ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's pretty much exactly right so, yeah. yep. <laughs> what are your dislikes then celeste okay so my dislikes are the the art mm -hmm. was hit mm. and miss for me like there were times where I was like, this is really cool. It looks like she's a paper doll standing up and, and acting all this stuff out. But then there was times where I was like, what is happening? It reminded me a lot of, there's a webtoon that got turned into a book okay. called Sithra. Mm. Um, I might be saying it incorrectly. Jason Brubaker made it. Um, and it, it's a similar art style. So I could see, Sithra being done in this style of animation mm -hmm. if it was to mm -hmm. be animated but um, which it's a fantastic story so check it out but at the same time there were some times where I was like this is just not good like I don't I don't care for, for this like the way Steve mm -hmm. looked I was like we've we've have we purposefully made him look like we don't care about <laughs> well... him because it was almost For, to some degree he's he's just kind of the, the problem child here it's I not mean, his fault yes, but, but every, everything else had everything else that had detail mm -hmm. had details and he had dots for eyes he looked like not even quite as good as a drawing from Doug <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> and Nickelodeon, Doug, when the show like, was still good. <laughs> but the art was obviously right, right, cheaper. Right. right. Yeah. Like, it just, I don't know. But again, sometimes it was great. So it was, mm -hmm. I, it's the disparity well, that annoys it, me. If it had been like that the whole time, it wouldn't have been as right. abrupt Do you for think me. possibly that it's that way? Because the focus was, the only thing that was really just really sharp looking the entire time was wonder woman herself yeah that's and true so was it was it a matter of it was they didn't care about him or was it a matter of making her stand out amongst everybody else like i'm looking at an image of the two amazonian guards yeah. who look much bigger than wonder woman herself and their details are even just a little bit muted than hers gargantuan's details are pretty muted well with, um, with go ahead Go ahead. Oh, and it's, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I can say it. mine can come afterwards. It's not so. It's not so much that Steve's details were muted. It was that they weren't mm. there. I mean, the only defense like, I have for that is that he was supposed to look like your normal, average, everyday Joe, and these are near goddesses. So. Well, I mean, there is that, and that That's might like have the, been what they were the going only defense for. I have, but admittedly, it's like very depressing that Steve is just so dull here right <laughs> so i also have questions for whoever decided to give the amazons bombs <laughs> they don't need them why, why do they have u.s army jeeps <laughs> that's a great question too like what's happening i mean by the time we thing? see that i mean her car just kind of makes sense but <laughs> still u.s army jeeps these were jeeps designed and made by men uh that doesn't seem to be the amazonian way <laughs> right <laughs> this is not the way <laughs> this is definitely not the way uh, my only real major dislike and it is going back to the art style is that it feels to clean for what they're trying to do for their the style they're mimicking i okay. really feel like mm -hmm. you, uh, what i'm mean is is like it feels it's like obvious that this was done in a computer even though mm. it's got kind of a paper mm. art pa cut out paper kind of look to it and in a way right. this is just me being pedantic in many ways knowing that they did not have this kind of money for this <laughs> considering mm -hmm. what these are i kind of wish they were actually like paper cutouts that were animated kind of in a still uh that would have been interesting yeah it uh I, mean, admittedly, I don't watch south park in generally but i've seen one or two and i've seen the original pilot where they are literally made out of actual uh post not poster board um what do you call that paper the cardboard 
No, it's it's the colored paper we used to use in school. Um uh, oh. construction paper. They're construction literally made paper. out of construction paper. It's like and I remember thinking that looked cool. But that kind of, but uh and of course, then they went to the other one because it was actually affordable to do on a regular basis. But <laughs> I, so I get that it's far more expensive to have done it this way. But looking back on it now, I kind of wish that it was kind of like printed out pieces of paper that they had moved around and animated in this cool way. And I get why it's not. And you wouldn't have gotten some of these 3D looks. But I kind of wish they'd done something like that, say, within the constraints of that style a little bit better. And I think I think that would have looked cooler. And admittedly, this is me nerding out a little and kind of <laughs> wishing that they had done some more nerding out. But yeah yeah that would have been really interesting the, the whole thing like this whole project the dc nation did because these were shorts that were appeared mm-hmm. on cartoon network it, it uh, back when cartoon network had a dc block yeah but it feels like it's like yep. I, you could take all these and just call it an elseworlds mm-hmm. block and it they all have been leaving me going i would like to see this fleshed out yeah like it almost feels like okay i know that you guys just kind of did this but like were you secretly going hey marvel or dc we could do this like what's what's happening here i am curious what 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 the background of a lot of this was if it was like a a test bed that maybe they would pull something from later but then the cartoon network would drop the dc nation block when they realized stuff like adventure time was making them a lot more money uh Mm -hmm. and that style of storytelling which i'm not knocking that in any way it's just not me uh but yeah that's i do kind of wonder what the what what the starting point of this was because cartoon network is known for having anthology short things that they would then um push out into into full tv shows like powerpuff girls and dexter's lab i know started out that way oh really in fact i saw powerpuff girls on the what a cartoon show before the show actually came out so i don't n- remember if i saw that originally but i mm-hmm. did know that they were short and the art style was very different <laughs> oh really i say i say it's very different i mean they, they it's still the same like drawings but it's like a lot cheaper and rougher animation <laughs> Uh-huh. And not as cleaned up as it later would be uh-huh. when Gindy Tartakovsky put money towards it too, or put put some <laughs> of his work towards it. But yeah, right. That that actually. Makes I, I kind of wonder if that's too. what was going on here, but they we have no way of knowing unless someone says something. So, right. That makes sense. Uh, so I guess unless y'all have any th- more dislikes to talk about, we can go into ratings. No, I don't got nothing. All right. So what are y'all rating this? I'm going to go ahead and jump off first on this one. And I'm going to give it, because it, it, it didn't hold me quite as much, but I still enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a decent seven. Okay. I'm I'm thinking probably about a 6.57, mostly because, not because of the art, but because they retold a story mm-hmm. that everyone mm-hmm. knows. If they had done a different story, and I should have brought this up earlier, but if they had done a different story, if they had done their mm-hmm. own thing, then it would have made me like it a little bit more. But because everybody knows the Steve Rogers crashes on the island, like everybody knows that, it just kind of. Uh, I, I I'm just throwing this out there. I understand. We will. This would not be a just a point of disagreement. I don't know if at the time everyone knew about Steve Rogers crashing on the island, and that's what got her off the mascara. But I don't know because I know this is before the movie. But mm-hmm. well, but you know, Linda Carter. Yeah, was a but big I deal. Dev didn't grow up watching that show, so <laughs> no, oh, I was true. watching the that's '60s true. Batman. Why would I watch '70s Wonder Woman? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Fair. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm giving this like a, a, a good seven. Like I said, I, I wish with this style that they had gone a little bit more dirty with it, I guess is the best way I know how to put that. A little more mm-hmm. analog with it. Uh, right. But I mean, the action mm-hmm. for what I saw was good. It's not my kind of art style with the surrealism, but it works for the most part. Uh, but uh, I. Yeah, it's it's a pretty decent uh, set of shorts, and it, I bet it would have fit great in between uh, McDonald's commercials and 
Teen Titans Go. That fits real yeah. perfectly, actually. Even though, like, in I feel like this really does like this more so than the Batman Shanghai. I feel like a late night. Mm-hmm. You know what it reminds me of? Sorry, just just popped in my head. Old school Aeon Flux cartoon. I know what you're talking about. Oh, I didn't have MTV back then. <laughs> you've, sh- you've shown mm-hmm. me bits of this. Like I could see this butted up between and that right. and the Max, and. Yeah, that's. I now want to watch both those. That wasn't MTV, that, was it? Or is that a different show? Yeah, that was MTV. Okay, I couldn't remember which, show, which channel that was. Mm-hmm. That makes sense yeah. now that I say that the out max. loud. But anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be it for our reviews of these two DC short bumper shorts series. Word. Right. Uh, before we get into some shameless self promotion, anything y'all want to say for the happy couple? Uh, yes, and that is, we love you guys. Enjoy your time together, and learn to relax and, and let the just let things flow as they need to. Try to laugh yeah. every day. All righty. So. Getting into our shameless self-promotion, which, yes, I did steal that term from Nate Marchand. Uh, it's fair. Tell us about Geek Devotions. Which is the main oh, thing hey. I know y'all from. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants Geek to Devotions go? is a show from devoted geeks who are devoted to letting people know that they're loved. We take geek pop culture albums like movies, video games, and comic books, and anime, and use it to let people know they're loved, they're cared for, and there's a plan and a purpose for their lives. Uh, Celeste, how do we do that? We, uh, like you said, we take geek geek pop culture items and we use them to make devotions. We stream once a week where we do what we call a pray and play. We uh, read through scripture as of the recording of this. We're going through Jude, but I can guarantee you we will not still be in Jude. Otherwise, we have airs. gone really deep into uh, Jude. Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very... Jude is as, really but it's also very short. deep and it can be very easy. <laughs> we did seven verses uh, yesterday and and that was a lot to chew on. Dallas has a lot of notes for it, but I don't think we're going to be going into uh, July. Fair. Yeah. So don't know what we're going to choose next. We just finished up First Samuel. We also have multiple podcasts. So we have a book podcast called We Read Allegedly. It mm-hmm. comes out once a month. We have a podcast called The Bottom Shelf, where every movie has a home um, because we watch terrible movies and review them. And when I say terrible, I mean terrible. <laughs> um, and then also, occasionally, depending on scheduling, we have mm-hmm. the Gundam Watch, where uh, people, not me, but people, watch <laughs> episodes of Gundam and talk about it. Yeah. I'm not on that one. So I'm on that <laughs> one, and we're working on some stuff coming out, hopefully before this podcast comes out, where we'll be getting back into the full swing of things. Actually cool story we're looking at reviewing episode 15 of the original most of gundam which is a lost episode yeah. and then the movie that they made that is kind of taking that story and making it much better because there's a reason they lost that episode ah yeah i'm i'm still hoping y- y'all get to mobile fighter g gundam and then i can jump in on that that craziness <laughs> i'm sorry that's the gundam i grew up on aka Gundam Ball Z. Uh, <laughs> but, so. yeah. Celeste, did you talk about we read, we read allegedly already? I did. We, we talked about how we do, we read a book once a month. It's going through some changes because our male counterpart in the three-person team uh, mm-hmm. is in college again. And so does not have time to read books that he doesn't that is want to read. very fair. <laughs> Or rather, the books that he does does not want to read are the ones that his teachers are making him read. So he doesn't have time to read the books he doesn't want to read that his friends are making him want to read. Um, so it's going to be changing a little bit. We're going to be bringing on some guests. I'm excited about the first guest because she gets mentioned in every episode. <laughs> I need to get back to that one. I, I That was one of the ones I let slip when... Uh... I I had to shorten what podcast I was listening to, but I want to come back to that one. So right. there's some interesting discussions. Um, Squid gets angry 
I get angry. Um, <laughs> John so did get angry. It's going to be fascinating. John, poor John. Um, I miss you, John. <laughs> John. John would just get beat up on about his his book choices, and it's not that we were necessarily beating up on him, but it was just the books that he chose, trying to appease us and being like, "Here, you'll like this." <laughs> We're like, <laughs> we will. Are you sure? Are you sh- Are you sure about that, that statement? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's it's uh, very interesting. It's going through some, like I said, it's going through some changes. So it's going to be a Fair. little bit of a different dynamic. And then when John has cool. time, he'll be back. Drew from the future again. Our next episode is going to be our release of to the main feed of all of our reviews of X-Men 97. And then after that, we are going to be back on the first Friday in August to review Tiny Toon Adventures, How I Spent My Summer Vacation. So join us for that. So I guess that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, in the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Dallas. This is Celeste. And we'll catch you in the next frame. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at GGeorge759. His Twitter at GGeorge759 and Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast, on Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming, on YouTube at Cellcast, on Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L.